Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm doing two and a half ton steering aluminum, 7075 aluminum from TMR Customs on Overclocked. I just did a video installing Reed uh, Racing Knuckles, and in that video, I show the disassembly of everything, and, uh, and then I reinstalled, changed basically the knuckles, and now we're back to the point where I'm installing the drag link and the tie rod from TMR Customs. So if you need to see the disassembly, go check that out. I also have a separate video on the uh, Reed Racing Knuckles. And uh, yeah, it's time to take a look at these really beefy steering components from TMR. All right, so this is the two and a half ton steering package from TMR Customs. This is a 7075 aluminum drag link and tie rod with these forged ends and these super beefy cartridges. So first of all, you'll notice I have four of these cartridges and they're all the same. Uh, that's one of the cool things about this kit is regardless of whether you're using it on the drag link or any of the knuckle connections, so you're gonna have three that go to the knuckle and then one uh, for the drag link goes to the pitman arm. It's all the same cartridge. What differs is in the boots. So for the tie rod, you have these one piece lockout washers and uh, seals and this is designed to prevent flop. It limits the range of motion for this cartridge when it's used for the tie rod. When used for the drag link, you want that additional range of motion, so you have these standard boots. So yeah, cartridges can be easily replaced. Uh, you don't have to replace the entire forged end, so that's pretty awesome. And the other thing is they're completely reversible. So you want a top mount or you want a bottom mount. You just screw the cartridge in the way that uh, fits your install. So these are completely 100% reversible. That's pretty awesome. The other cool thing about these cartridges is if you need to replace them, let's say they get worn out, you can literally pull one out, replace it with the new one, and you don't have to redo your alignment because you're not changing anything with the actual forging. You don't have to take this off. Uh, so your measurements and your settings are all gonna be just the same. You just pull the cartridge, replace it, and uh, all your measurements are the same. So that's a pretty cool feature. All right, so I just installed Reed Racing Knuckles, which actually have a, uh, a drag link mount designed to be top mounted. So this is just gonna plug straight in the top of the reed knuckle. However, if you have a stock knuckle, uh, they do sell this weld in reverse taper sleeve. Now, other companies do provide like a split sleeve that you don't have to weld in, but TMR Customs uh, decided to use a weld in option. That way it's a little more tolerant if you don't drill exactly uh, where you need to drill. So again, if you have a stock knuckle, you can drill it out and then weld this sleeve in, and then you'll be able to use a top mount drag link. I'm not gonna use this on in my install because I don't need it. Uh, I already have a knuckle design to be top mounted. And the other thing I have here from TMR Customs is the steering stabilizer uh, bracket. That's for the tie rod, so yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the assembly of these components to prepare for putting them on the Jeep. So we'll start with the drag link. And for that, I'm gonna need two cartridges, the soft rubber boots and the boots retaining uh, clips. And then I've got one straight and one slightly crooked uh, end forging. And then the smaller aluminum uh, bar. So, uh, what I recommend you do is get a measurement of your current drag link, and then you'll know how far to put these hole centers. Um, and then that way it'll be pretty close when you get started uh, installing them on the Jeep. All right, so first thing you wanna do is figure out which side you want to go to the pitman arm, and that's gonna be the straight side. And then the crooked side is gonna go to the knuckle. And I'm gonna take these jam nuts and spin them all the way back. 
So that's what I've got there. Now, as far as the cartridge goes, I'm doing a top mount. And the way this is gonna work is it's going to angle backwards towards the knuckle. So the knuckle will be here. And this is gonna fit down on the top. And because it's top mount, I wanna install it that direction. And then on this one, it doesn't really matter because it's a straight bar. So pick your favorite side. And, and that's gonna go up into the pitman arm. All right, so I'm gonna apply anises to these forging threads. Again, this is a marine grade anti-seize. I talked about this in the knuckle video. Uh, it's a non-metallic, and uh, I'm starting to shift to using this non-metallic uh, grease. Uh, it's great for corrosion uh, prevention, particularly with dissimilar metals. You've got a steel and aluminum. Anytime you use a metallic-based anti-seize, such as a copper or, or a nickel or aluminum, uh, it just adds more metal to the mix. This actually is going to separate the metal components so that they're not able to react against one another. So I'm even going to um, put it around the end. I don't know how much I need. So I'm just gonna start out about like that. All right, so I'd like to make sure that this aluminum bar is centered between the two forgings. So I'm gonna use this label as a guide. So as soon as I grab threads, there we go, just grabbed. So one, two turns for now. And basically that's just enough. I'm gonna set this so I don't get anises everywhere. That's just enough to get it started. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other end. And you see this little line here at the end of the bar, that tells you that it is a reverse thread. All right, so it's just started. So now I'm gonna go one, two. All right, so I'm two threads in on both. I need another piece of paper. How about that envelope? All right. And then now, so now I'm just gonna rotate this so that it adjusts to the overall width that I need. Now, what's my overall width? Well, I don't know. I guess I need to go measure the drag link I just took off. But as I turn that, it's pushing this this way and then also threading in. So you've got equal thread distance on both ends. All right, so I'm approximately 40 and 5 eighths, hole center to hole center. So I'm just gonna sort of set this up right now. I got a ways to go. I can imagine most of the threads are gonna get used uh, since this is obviously built for a JK. They know the dimensions going in. Where's my measurement? Hmm. Not too much further. I'm trying to avoid putting too much of the anises where I'm eventually gonna wanna put thread lock for the jam nut. And again, all we have to do is ballpark it. And then That looks pretty good right there. Go ahead and clean off some of this excess anisees that's trying to squirt out, which is a good thing. And then I'm just gonna tighten down the jam nut. And then I'm going to use anisees. All right, now they want this torqued at 120 foot-pounds, and there's two ways to accomplish this. 
You can do it with a monster two inch uh, socket. Has to be a six point socket, 12 point socket will not work. And so you can see here, I've got this uh, crazy adapter, a half inch to a three quarter inch to a one inch adapter to make this happen. Uh, or the easy way is just to buy their uh, $20 cartridge tool. I don't have that, I've got this, but hey, um, seriously, get that tool. It'll make things a lot easier because this stuff isn't really easy to come by. All right. All right, because this is the drag link, I'm using the soft boots for this. And it's just gonna go over the lip. So what I'm doing is uh, sort of getting it started on there and almost like a spiral sort of spiraling it on, if that makes any sense. There we go. What's on there? Okay. All right, I've double checked my measurements and now I'm ready to do the initial fit. And then I will do final adjustments after everything is together. All right, so this is gonna go down on the top. And then I'm gonna bring my Pitman arm back over, which is essentially turning the steering wheel. That's gonna go up there. Start that nut. And then start that nut. All right, so torque spec here at the arms on all of these is 63 foot-pounds. Okay. All right, torque spec up here at the Pittman arm is 77. And it's quite a chore, just for access. All right, same thing for the tie rod. Get both your ends on and uh, get them set to the length that your other tie rod was. Already got that set. Now I'm gonna install these cartridges uh, pointing up. So make sure you have it so it's pointed up and this curve goes towards the front of the vehicle. So this one would be backwards. It's gonna go like that. Because the front is that way. At least on my table. So normally when you torque something, you reduce the torque value by 20% to account for the uh, anti-seize, which is an anti-friction. It actually allows you to torque it tighter. But because they tell you to put anti-seize on and then tell you a torque value, my assumption is they want it at 120 with the anti-seize as the final. So I'm going to make that assumption right now and do it. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not like we're trying to replicate factory torque specs and adding our own anti-seize. Okay. All right, for the tie rod, we're using the lockout washer, so it's basically just gonna fit on, and it's just gonna sit on top there. It's a rigid piece, so when you mount it to the 
knuckle, it's going to hold it in place and you can fill it with grease. All right, so I've got this hung across and I have a little bit of a problem and that is my steering stabilizer wants to be in the way. When you set this lockout on, you have to make sure that your joint is perfectly centered so that it will fit on the edge. Um, if you don't have that centered, it's not gonna lay right. All right, well, I did have to do a little bit of problem solving just now, but such is life. So it's actually a combination of adding the reed knuckles and this super beefy two and a half ton tie rod from TMR Customs that the problem is my steering stabilizer bracket was actually getting in the way. So I was limited. And, uh, yeah, basically I'm gonna have to figure out plan B. And I know that there's some options, but in order for me to get on the road tomorrow to go to work, I just dropped this uh, tie rod. You can see where I hammered the side of the knuckle, same way I removed for the start of this install. Took that down and then just used the hammer, bent that up a little bit to clear. And uh, you know, worst case, I can always bend it back I have a feeling though there's a relocation in my future. Maybe it's time for RAM assist, I don't know, but hey. All right, so if you watch the install video on these Reed racing knuckles, uh, you'll know that I mentioned that the taper on these ball joint mounting holes was a little bit smaller than OEM in this current production run. And uh, if you think about taper, uh, if you think of a cone, uh, the actual taper is the same, right? So, but it's a standard GM one-ton tie rod taper. It's a standard automotive taper for that matter. Um, but what differs is how deep the taper goes. So the cone, you can imagine the deeper you taper that hole, the wider that top hole is gonna be. So right now we've got um, the, the hole in the bottom is bigger than the hole in the top and that's how it tapers in. Anyway, so, this is slightly smaller than OEM, and when I talked to Reed about why that was, they said because they wanted to be compatible with uh, stock factory JK steering, but also that um, they have to deal with the tolerances of various uh, aftermarket tie rod in manufacturers. So they made it slightly smaller so that you're guaranteed a solid fit regardless. Now, this TMR Customs tie rod end should fit in a standard OEM uh, taper, but, and it does, and you can see I've got actually uh, a couple of rows of threads here. So if this was a standard boot, say like this, uh, between the tie rod end and the knuckle, I'd be fine, the boot would bridge that gap. It's a strong, solid connection. The problem is this particular type of uh, seal and lockout washer sort of needs to be a little bit tighter against the knuckle to hold it in place. When, when the tie rod in rotates, it wants to pop out of its position. So what I need to do is increase the taper and make this uh, go a little bit deeper inside that knuckle. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ream out this hole, but I'll talk about that actually in a separate video. The reason is, there's not a lot of information on YouTube about how to ream your, uh, your knuckles. So uh, I'll just make that into a separate video. Well, that's pretty good right there. So basically all I did was bring it back to OEM specifications, pretty close, 
and then you can see how that washer now fits and restricts the uh, the flop so yeah that's all it took a couple of seconds with a reamer on a drill so this is out after reaming out the driver's side and then reinstalling you can see I've just got a little bit of room here to spin this around uh, but it's enough that it's going to prevent that from flopping and also will retain some uh, some grease in there so so go ahead and make sure you tighten down these zerts before you try and add grease uh, they probably won't be tight when they come to you so just take a little wrench tighten them down the rest of the way all right just to wrap things up for you uh, yeah this is the final install rides really nice I'm super happy with it if you are having problems getting grease into your new uh, cartridges uh, all four of the cartridges are the same they've got grease zerts uh, make sure first of all make sure you tighten those down I had a hard time getting grease in there actually three of the four really wouldn't take any grease and I contacted TMR customs they said yeah that's not a bad thing that's actually normal they're pre-packed from the factory so when they come to you they're packed and uh, he said a lot of times you won't be able to get uh, much additional grease in there until they sort of start to wear in and break down a little bit so uh, if you can't fill it with grease don't panic that's just the way it is all right guys so that's it that is the two and a half ton tmr customs steering installation that's the drag link and the tie rod now i've got some more work to do right so next video you're going to see the actual alignment of toe uh, with that tie rod i'll do those final adjustments and then i will uh, lock those jam nuts down then i'll get the rotors and calipers back on and uh and the wheels and then drop the vehicle do the final drag link adjustment the only real issue i have right now is steering stabilizer so i bent that bracket up out of the way that's a temporary fix and uh, i'll just run without the steering stabilizer until i figure it out uh, i've got some options but the steering stabilizer isn't super critical it's not like i can't drive without it matter of fact i know guys that don't run one so uh, and then I know guys that have like six of them. So yeah, um, if your vehicle is properly aligned and all of your parts and components are in good working order, you shouldn't actually need a steering stabilizer. But uh, I am gonna put something on. I just gotta figure out how, and, uh, and I don't know how long that's gonna take. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Next one, don't worry. I'll do that alignment showing you a cool trick with an alignment tool that I have that I've never been able to use yet. There's a reason I haven't put the rotors and calipers back on, and that's because of this. So anyway, catch you on the next one.